first, we need that GBF to be transformative, ambitious, realistic, actionable, and implementable. If these features will miss in that framework, then implementation will be difficult. And it's not just implementation, but implementation which will really be able to uh, get us to 2030 when we'll want to see the loss of biodiversity reversed and halted. So we need an ambitious framework. We need, uh, we need a number of things. I mean, a lot of people are talking about conserving at least 30% of lands and, and waters by, by, by 2030, and that's certainly an element of it, uh, but that's not enough. Uh, we know we also have to halt and reverse biodiversity loss, so there needs to be something in there about restoration. We need to be looking at drivers of, of, uh, of, bio, of nature loss, um, pollution, pesticides, uh, harmful subsidies. And, and, and clearly, we also need to talk about resource mobilizations. So it, it's really, it's a package of issue. And will we get everything that some, many of us would like to see in this agreement? Maybe not, but, 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 but for, for, for this to be ambitious, ambitious, we need to have all of the necessary ingredients to ensure that, that we are moving towards a nature positive world, as opposed to what we have year after year, a nature negative world. It is really very important that at the end of the COP15, that ends on the 19th of December, that it adopts a rigorous uh, human rights-based global biodiversity framework that ensures that the whole of society are part of the implementation process. And of course, as we are here from the Women's Caucus, one key uh, a request from us is the adoption of the Target 22, which is a standalone target of gender equality. And we really think that this is really very important because having a gender equality target embedded into the framework will help it to be a bit more equitable and inclusive framework for all. But also one of the very important documents coming out of the COP is going to be the post-2020 Gender Plan of Action. So this document, which is supposed to be a guiding document for the post-2020, is also very important because this will also help in putting actions and modalities in place of how national governments um, and states would be able to operationalize the, the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. Para que el marco global de biodiversidad post 2020 sea una realidad, necesitamos acciones concretas. Necesitamos que los estados reconozcan y respeten los derechos de los pueblos indígenas, que realmente se valore la contribución que los pueblos indígenas desarrollamos a la conservación de la biodiversidad, esa biodiversidad que representa el 80% de nuestros territorios. Eso hace que los pueblos indígenas sean claves. Necesitamos que los estados, hoy que se está haciendo la negociación, realmente instalen negociaciones claras y transparentes que permitan que los pueblos indígenas puedan participar en igual de condiciones. Es momento de que las negociaciones sean abiertas. Es un momento que las negociaciones realmente vean que necesitamos urgentemente conservar el planeta. No podemos dejar para mañana un marco global que no represente y que no reconozca los derechos de los pueblos indígenas. El tema de la territorialidad, el tema del consentimiento libre, previo informado, la participación de las mujeres y jóvenes indígenas, el tema de los conocimientos internacionales, son claves en estos momentos para que la biodiversidad se conserve a nivel territorial. Necesitamos tener un marco global, necesitamos tener políticas globales pero que se desarrolle con acciones territoriales. Tenemos que hacer un vínculo entre lo global, lo nacional y lo territorial. Si no construimos un marco global en esas tres dimensiones, no vamos a salvar el planeta. Es momento que los estados y las partes que están negociando se reconozcan y vean que todos debemos de aportar a un marco que realmente sea exitoso para los 20 o 30 años que vienen en el futuro. 
I think the first thing that needs to happen is that we have to put equity front and centre. Um, you may have heard that developing countries last night uh, walked out of the negotiations on resource mobilisation uh, and in other agenda items precisely because of the stalemate on this issue. Uh, developed countries have uh, not met their obligations, their legally binding obligations under Article 20 of the Convention and developed countries are saying, well, we hold most of the world's biodiversity and a lot is being asked of us to take action for biodiversity as well as to monitor, report uh, and, and review all these and, 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 and be held accountable for our actions. But at the same time, there's no commensurate financial resources and this is what developing countries are calling for. For new and additional, a substantial increase of financial resources as well as the establishment of a new global biodiversity fund uh, that will be more easily accessible, that have, will have modalities that are easier for developing countries to access uh, the resources that they need to take biodiversity action. So secondly, I think that structural issues need to be addressed, uh, which the GBF unfortunately is not yet at the moment. So for example, the issue of overconsumption, where this has to be on an equitable level as well. Um, issues like developing countries in debt distress, for example, these things are not even being discussed uh, at much uh, in the corridors or in the negotiating rooms here. And finally, I think we see a lot of of uh, PR slogans and um, very undefined terms like nature positive uh, and nature-based solutions creeping onto the agenda. Whereas we have already established terms within the CBD that can um, actually take action. And secondly, we need to safeguard against these terms resulting in the dispossession of the very people who are best stewards of biodiversity, indigenous peoples and local communities. The global uh, biodiversity framework is our once in a decade chance to uh, help them reverse uh, biodiversity loss across the globe. Uh, as Greenpeace, we believe uh, we need to adopt an ambitious at least 30 by 30 uh, target to cover both terrestrial but also the global ocean. Uh, we need those protected areas because we know a lot of key ecosystems across the world are uh, threatened. Uh, by human uh, activities. And we also need this target to uh, uh, take full uh, account of the, uh, the rights of indigenous people and local communities. In addition to that, uh, in the CBD, uh, our problem is not always necessarily that we, uh, we lack targets and ambition, uh, but rather uh, you know, there is a big gap and deficit in terms of fulfilling some of the promises uh, made previously. That was certainly the case for the 2010 to 2020 uh, Aichi round. We hope uh, the Kunming Montreal round uh, will uh, not, uh, you know, uh, replicate uh, the failure that we had. And the only way to do so uh, is for all the countries, once uh, the global biodiversity targets are adopted, to translate those targets within one year to their national uh, context, either by national regulation or legislation. Uh, this is the only way to make sure uh, that in, in 10 years time, uh, when, we, when we come back and take stock, uh, these, these global targets will be fulfilled. We need to involve all the stakeholders, means that we need to work with uh, uh, local, and local communities, we need to work with uh, government, we need to work with, uh, to involve civil society and uh, we also need to mobilize more funding because the global biodiversity framework is very ambitious means that uh, if you want to achieve all the uh, all the objective we need to have uh, more funding we need to mobilize more more funding more resource financial resources to to support the implementation of uh, the global biodiversity framework in the developing countries. We should really protect the best and the sustainable manage the rest. So we need to protect at least 30% of our, our land and ocean so that we can really sustain the ecosystems that they can provide to us. And we should restore and sustainably manage the rest. We should have reduced the drivers of the biodiversity loss because without remove the drivers, whatever put aside for protection will not last very long. We need to have the footprint of our consumption and production so that we can remove 
reduce the dr drivers for biodiversity loss. And then for all this to be done, we need to have respect the rights of people, right of indigenous women, youth, the, gen the people that in this on this planet now, but also the people that are coming to this planet. And we need to have uh, enough resources, financial resources, to support the countries, developing countries, who are putting most of the effort on conservation where the biodiversity mostly lie on. And the, in addition to all the protection, reducing the pressure, inclusive decision making, financing, the most important is that we have to really implement so that the, uh, the Paris Agreement for Nature can be implemented and then bring the result, bring the impact we like to see so that by 2030, we do have biodiversity loss halted, reversed, and be nature positive. And that means all the actions, all the investment, financing should be pos nature positive, should bring benefit to nature other than damaging nature as we go into the next decade. There are three things that will make this framework a particular success. The first is putting indigenous peoples and local communities at the heart of the global biodiversity framework. Most of the world's biodiversity is on land, on the land and territories of indigenous peoples and local communities. They know how to manage nature, they know how to protect the water that we all rely on to protect the birds, the life, the nature that we all rely on. Uh, so it's absolutely critical that their needs, their rights, their cultural identity, their knowledge is at the heart of the global biodiversity framework because without them and without supporting them, reaching uh, the goals of this framework won't be possible. The second thing is to ensure that the 30 by 30 target uh, is done, is delivered in ways that are equitable, that protect the rights and, and that deliver resources behind the needs and the priorities of Indigenous peoples and local communities. And the third and final one is my particular uh, area, which is around uh, the delivery of finance. So we need more finance, we need to make sure it's more accessible, and we need to make sure it's delivered in ways that get behind the needs and priorities of local communities. And with those three things, we will get a really great framework, we will have a really strong foundation, and we will give the global biodiversity framework the best chance it has to be successful into the future. We have to change our mind and our relationship to the planet. We have to get others to see past their own selfish interests uh, and, and care about what's happening to all sentient beings on this planet. Uh, and we have to be humble enough to accept the advice of the people who really know, which are the indigenous people that we slaughtered, uh, but they have the answer on how to live, to leave no footprint behind, and to think of the seventh generation. Your actions must help the seventh generation.